everyone welcome to today's video today we're doing another don't regret it use it gel plate printing session to kick off this session i've got some chipped sapphire distress oxide and i'm going to roll it a nice even whoops hopefully move that out the way shall we a nice even coat on my gel plate Got a bit of scrap paper there, might clean my brayer off in a bit, but the first thing I'm going to do is take this bubble wrap. This has got quite large bubbles in it, and I will pop it on there, press it down, try not to shift it, and just give it a good press into that distress oxide layer, lift it up, take another piece of paper here, Press it down firmly all over. Give it a few seconds for the ink to transfer. And then lift it up. And we have got this absolutely gorgeous bubble wrap print. Now we should have some ink left on here. And I think what I'm going to do is spritz it with a bit of water. And then... Press this down on this piece of paper to take the ink off and make a kind of negative or inverse of what we've got. So we've got two really gorgeous prints there. I'm going to clean off my gel plate with a baby wipe. And I'm going to dry that with a microfiber cloth. I don't want that ink, so I'm going to clean that off on here. And it won't go to waste. Now I think I'll go with a green. This is bundled sage. And again, I'm going to create a nice even layer on here. Spread out that ink. Get rid of the cat hair again. I don't even own a cat like that and now I've got some regular I guess size bubble wrap so small bubbles and I can pop that on press that down carefully again lift that up get another piece of paper and pull that print Now I'm going to clean off again, clean that off. I'm going to wipe my brow this time because I want to play with, I think, maybe a pink. So we're going to go to warm colours. I don't want any cool colours on my brow because it will make mud. So I've got warm lipstick and dried marigold and I'm going to add two colours at opposite ends of my gel plate. Just make sure that's dry. And I'm going to roll her out the dried marigold and go up towards the worn lipstick. And then I'm going to roll out the worn lipstick oops, and work my way back down into the dried marigold to hopefully get a nice smooth blend. And now I've got some die cuts here. So I've just cut these from smooth white cardstock and I'll pop them on there like that. Take paper and use them a bit like stencils or masks. Press down firmly so hopefully this paper will contact the ink on the gel plate through the apertures in those die cuts. You can if you want to. Let's just clean that off. Roller. Oops over the back of your print here and that will hopefully help everything press down and now we can peel that off and we've got a lovely print there with a nice blend and some really strong crisp lines what this will also have done is color the die cuts 
for this next print, I'm going to use Uncharted Mariner and Wilted Violet. Both cool colours should work together fine. And spread them out. Might go on a bit of a diagonal this time. And now I've got some string here. And I've sort of split it up into its individual strands. Some of it's a bit knotty. There's two strands together. Another single strand. Two strands. I think that's still three strands. Pop that on top and pull a print and see what we get. So this is going to be quite lumpy so make sure to press down really well and now i've got a really interesting really natural looking print with some stark white lines so we'll take those off of there and i can see some ink still on there I'll just use the back of this and see what we get when we pull that print. Oh, I like that. You can really see the pattern of the string in there. So that's a lot of fun. But what if you wanted a print like this, but you didn't want it to be such a stark colour? Well, you take something perhaps like salvage patina and spread that out. So that's a nice light kind of no it's not salvage patina it's speckled egg i was going to say that's a nice duck egg blue <laughs> and then call it salvage patina but it's not it's speckled egg so all i'm going to do is pull that so i've got a, a light gray background i could go in with another coat if i wanted to saturate it a bit more so that's slightly darker and let's get the Uncharted Mariner again. I haven't cleaned my brayer off because uh, I was going in with a very similar colour. Let's add a bit more of that wilted violet up there. I think this time we will pop some string on again. And get the speckled egg, and somehow I've managed to get Uncharted Mar on it, Marina on it already. But we'll pop the speckled egg print down. And now, very similar to this one, but it's not so stark white because we put a, a layer of, well, two layers of speckled egg down first. So you can print and then do another print on top if you want to introduce different colours in different layers. And the good thing about Distress Oxides in, they do layer really well. They have an opacity to them because of the pigment ink and the other bits and bobs that are in there. So the Wilted Violet and Uncharted Mariner will layer really nicely on top of the Speckled Egg. So I'm very happy with those. So I think I'll just pop a bit of Victorian Velvet on my gel plate this time. And I had a rummage in my kitchen to find things with an interesting pattern or texture. And I've got my potato masher. So I thought I would press that in and see what I get. Clean the ink off of there. So I said in a previous video, you just really need to be careful not to use anything sharp near your gel plate because uh, any marks that you make in it, permanent marks, will show up on your prints. So I'm happy with a potato masher because it's not got any sharp edges. And there we have some interesting spotty circles. I think I must have uh, moved it a bit there, but that's fine. I really like this pattern and I like where it overlaps too. So this is what I've got from just a few minutes of gel printing with my Distress Oxides. I use some bubble wrap, I use some die cuts, I use some string and I used a potato masher. I'd be really interested to see if you have done gel printing before using non-crafty items like bubble wrap, string, 
potato mashers, whatever, <laughs> whatever you can think of. If you've got any photos, then do come to my Facebook group and share those because it's always good to get extra ideas of things you can use from around the house that aren't necessarily crafty items. Right, I'm going to pick a few of these and make a card for you. I don't think I can make a card today without using this because this is my favourite of all the prints that I've pulled. This is quite flimsy paper, so when I've located my stick glue, I'm going to make it a bit more sturdy by sticking it down to a piece of regular cardstock. My card today is smooth white cardstock. It's a square of five and three quarter by five and three quarter inches. And I'm going to cut, I'm just trying to decide on the orientation, whether I want them going horizontally in straight lines or vertically. So I think that's gonna make a really nice center panel. And this might be a little bit out there, but I'm all for experimenting. I'm stamping this floral leafy stamp in black ink on top of this gel print. So I'm going to try and capture a nice part of the gel print for my flowers, which I'm gonna fussy cut out in a minute. So we'll deal with that in a tick. And now I've got this. This is the green with the small bubble wrap. And my plan is to use this for the leaves. Again, I'm going to stick this onto some smooth white cardstock with stick glue, just to give it a bit more rigidity. And I shall trim these out with my detail scissors and when I've done that I'll come back to you. So I've cut everything out and I'm going to run a black pen around the edge of each of my die cuts to make the edge nice and black and cover up any mistakes in the cutting. I did cut out the original flowers, but I've also cut out an extra one of those because I think I might layer them like that. To add dimension to my panel, I put some foam tape on the back and I want to get this roughly in the middle. About there will do, but I want to get it straight. To add my first layer of flowers, I've got glue and I'll just pop them there, I think, just hanging off the edge of this panel. And I will add some foam tape to the back of this flower and then stick it on top of the flower that I've just stuck down. So I've got some nice dimension there now. And now for my leaves. I decided to cut the leaves out individually rather than trying to keep them on their branches together because each trio of leaves were connected by a stem and just thought it'd be easier to cut them out individually but and less fiddly and it would also give me more flexibility, I could put them exactly where I wanted them. For my sentiment, I'm going to use this thanks die, probably with its shadow. And to tie it in with the black lines of the stamping, I'm gonna cut it from black cardstock, but before I do, I'm gonna cover the black cardstock with clear packing tape to make it glossy. And press it down really well to get any wrinkles out. So I've cut my thanks, it's now glossy. I'm gonna dip that in my high tack glue and pop it on its outline, its shadow. I've put craft foam on the back of this die cut too. And I'm thinking just about there. It's 
So it overlaps the flower slightly, hangs off this side slightly like that hangs off. And for a finishing touch, I'm going to add some black Nouveau drops. There we go, that's finished. I'm really pleased with it. I love this bubble wrap print. I think I'm going to be doing lots of that. And I love the spotty dottiness of the pink uh, on the flowers and the texture that we've got on the green leaves as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope that it's given you some gel printing inspiration. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Hit the subscribe button and all the other things that everyone asks you to do. And I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.